Hey folks, it is Wednesday, May 5th already, and this is once again the Daily Word. Well, in Philippians 3, the Apostle Paul said that he counted all things in his life that had given him self-importance and identity to be lost. His racial identity as a Jew, his life as a Pharisee, all of his performance and achievement, all for the sake of knowing Jesus. Philippians 3, verse 8, More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. Now he said that because <clears throat> he had traded all of that in for chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. He was exchanging his own life for the life of Jesus. You know, Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Well, you know, Jesus didn't come to make my life wonderful. He didn't come to exalt my racial identity, either as the Native American Osage I am from my father's side, or as the white European I am from my mother's side. But he came to make his life wonderful in me. My life for his. Everything else fades to insignificance. Everything else dies on the cross. You know, signs and wonders followed Paul everywhere he went, and it wasn't because he was an apostle standing so far above us. It wasn't his office that released the power. It was that his life had been exchanged for Jesus' life. He said, I have died. I have been crucified with Christ, and the, now, and the life that I now live is his. So here's the word of the hour. Listen. It's time for us, all of us, to get over everything I. <clears throat> A big part of why the church in America has lost so much power and influence in the culture is that we've been infected not with the coronavirus, but with the I virus. It's a contagion. It's a destructive disease we've caught from the culture around us that's infected and influenced our approach to every ministry of the church and just about every exercise of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Too much has become the quest for self-fulfillment, your spiritual gift that makes you important, your best life now, my individual well-being, healing, success in life, personal happiness, personal prosperity, and more. This is, this is true of how we've come to approach inner healing, for instance, or physical healing, or prophetic ministry, where we're all after personal prophetic words when that's not the thrust of Scripture. It's even affected our study of the Bible. As a result, we've been too much focused inwardly when we were called to be focused outwardly. We've become much too focused on, on ourselves as individuals when we were called to be a tribe connected in oneness with one another in the Lord and given to the welfare of our people. We've sought to be served, to, to be served rather than to serve. <clears throat> I is what is destroying this culture around us. I is destroying our churches, warping our theology. <laughs> and if you're not relating to the word I, use me, I don't care. It's dividing believers from one another. It's bringing leaders down. I feeds the corruption and quest for power that corrupts our government and even our churches. I is why so many of us are depressed. Jesus said that he who has found his life, i.e. focus on self, will lose it. While he who has lost his life for his sake, for Jesus' sake, and for the gospel will find it. Self-focus is therefore, listen, a straight line to depression because it takes us to a place God didn't design us for. We're designed and built for deep connection with each other, to live beyond ourselves and our personal needs and feelings. 
Philippians 2, verse 3, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to speak of how Jesus gave everything, how he sacrificed himself for our salvation, and how that led to exaltation and glory for him and then for us. Real life, real healing, real power, real glory begins with self dying in order to be united with Jesus who lived and who still lives entirely for the sake of others. The Apostle Paul had died with Jesus and been raised with him. I had died. And in that dying, he plugged into something available to every believer, high and low, not just prophets and apostles, but everybody. He died and was raised with Jesus. In Ephesians 2.6, he wrote about where Jesus takes us in that death to self. It reads, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Done deal. Done deal. It's not one resurrection for the lowly peons and another for the big boys. It's not one Holy Spirit for those who lead and another for the ones who follow. It's not one for the adults and another for the kids. And when he moves in, he doesn't leave any of his bags at the door. He brings all his gifts with him. Ministering selflessly in the power of God is not just for the big boys. It's not just for the leaders. It's not just for the platform people. It's for everyone who comes to Jesus. So get over yourself and step up. When we've made that exchange of life, ours for his, he brings his whole self to dwell in us in the Holy Spirit <clears throat> without regard for who we are or our station in life. And if we let it happen, then we naturally, bury the, <laughs> we, we naturally bear the fruit of his presence in us in the kind of selfless giving of ourselves in love that releases real life back into us. This connects us to one another because we share the one Holy Spirit who has come to dwell in us. The triune God is not divided. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one in a more profound sense than we can even begin to wrap our understanding around. And Jesus' prayer is that this would be reflected in us, in our relationships given for one another's sake. John 17, 21, that they, this is Jesus' prayer, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. John fourteen twelve, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, that means given to Jesus, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. Well, you know, while those works are certainly works of power and love, miraculous works, they're also profoundly selfless works, not self-aggrandizing works. They're works given away in love. They're works performed in oneness with the heart of the Father God. We are positioned in Christ, in the Father. And the greater works come not because of some kind of emotional or intellectual certainty that we erroneously call faith that depends on us or or our own self-focused estimate of ourselves, but because we're in Christ Jesus and he is in the Father. Greater works than these because I go to the Father, he said. He takes us with him, always back to the Father. Most of us are much too emotionally self-centered. The pandemic has made it worse because we've been designed and built for relational connection and the pandemic enforced separation that we never should have allowed ourselves to submit to. We were designed to live as a tribe connected in which each part belongs to every other part. 1 Corinthians 12, if one member is honored, all are honored, and if one member suffers, all suffer. Here's another part. We might be, we might be givers outwardly, but inwardly it's often all about me and how giving makes me feel. Or we can give and, and, and still hold others at arm's length without, resist, without risking self. I'm continually impressed with Isaiah 58, verse 10. And if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your gloom will become like midday. Well, that's a step 
that's a step beyond handing out food over the food bank counter or giving a $20 bill to a homeless beggar at a, on, on, at, at a freeway on-ramp. Giving yourself to the hungry is an opening of the heart. It's a connection in relationship that overcomes self. It's a making of someone else's feelings and emotions more important than your own. One of the key battlegrounds today in recovering the lost voice and the influence of the church has a lot to do with overcoming our cultural conditioning that's made us emotionally self-focused and has overemphasized <clears throat> our individualism at the expense of the kind of self-sacrifice and oneness with our tribe, the body of Christ, that Jesus and the apostles understood. Now, I know I've only scratched the surface in this short 10 minutes, but I submit it to you to ponder and pray into. If we're to recover our voice in this world and walk in the power and anointing that God is longing to release, this is the path to pursue, the path of the cross and the resurrection. Well, that's it for today. God bless you all. Remember that tomorrow is the national day of prayer. Be in prayer for our nation and its people. God bless.